they drilled nine test holes, and they, they went down to a certain depth, and they found out where the water was and wasn't. So they're going to go a meter above the water table, and then start with their clay liner, and then they're going to put all the asbestos in there. Now, when you look at all the documentation sent out, Appendix D, I don't know, page 43, there's a nice little overview of the exact area. There's three rivers. I don't know how they, or whoever gave them permits to put yes. uh, construction debris up there anyway. They're on a hill. You know, a little edge, what rolls downhill. But there's three brooks up there that run within 300 meters, 500 meters, and 1,000 to the west, or to the east. Well, one of them brooks comes right down behind my property. Now, it's not a big brook. By the time it gets to my place, it's just a marsh. But that's where my well is and everything else. Mm -hmm. So for me, being the age I'm at, you know, I may never ever see an asbestos there. But in 10 or 15 or 20 years from now, or 30 years from now, who's going to be there? Yeah. And Mr. Ross, as much money as he wants to make, is not going to be the steward of our environment. He's just going to let it go over to in his pocket, and then he's going to be gone. And then it'll be the province will be responsible for cleaning all this up. You know, and the biggest concern is transporting it there. Once it's in the ground, it should stay there. But I don't know how you could put this much hazardous material on a hill in a valley. Even if it's above the water, it's going to run down. If they have a fire and they go to suppress it, it's going to run down off this hill. We all live downhill. I was up there today. I drove around in my truck. Take a look around. It's ludicrous what they're thinking to do. So I don't know how he got the permit in 1995 when he got it. The water tests are done twice a year in the documentations. There's magnesium, there's uh, mercury, and iron limits. Twice a year they do it, and they didn't say when, but most times it's above those levels that are recommended by the health environment. So how long has this been going on? behind our properties or in our water lines from this construction debris. There is material in construction debris that you shouldn't be playing with. You know, you don't go around chewing on lead paint anymore. Yeah. You know, you don't go around chewing on plywood anymore, stuff like that there. Tree the lumber is up there and everything else. So that's what's running down into our water supply right now. So if they can't contain construction material on their own property, and it's in their own report, why should we let them, or why should the government let them Put in a hazardous waste material up there of right any sorts. Yeah. Yeah. sorts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had these questions for Larry. Or okay. I heard your name a couple times. I can leave them here. I can email them to somebody. I got on the Facebook page there a couple days ago. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to be a Philadelphia lawyer when you're reading this stuff. <laughs> you know? So I've been in deep into it and trying to figure out what's going on. But I can just see these three streams if there's a fire. You can't let trees grow on. Who's going to be a steward of that land in, in 50 years' time? Keep it mowed down, a nice little grass on it, so the trees don't tip over. The root system pulls all that stuff out, and now it's exposed to the air again. I haven't even thought about the trees. Well, you can't let anything grow on it. There's a study in Philadelphia that's they have a big pile down there. It's all nice grass, but they got to keep it nice grass because if a tree grows on it, the root system, and like you say, if it blows over, it's just all open. So. Uh, from what I was reading, I just had a couple. Has Pictou been considered? Like, there's a site already established in Pictou. I didn't know what the one in is, yeah. Earl Town is it? Or? Kemptown. 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 Oh, I, I've seen the list of them, but has, has the government considered just moving it to there? I understand this Ross guy wants to make a living, and I'm not against that. But Yeah, but I'm against, you know, ruining the communities. But why should the government allow... 10 or 15 of these sites set up when only we need three or four. But I'm just saying, if, you, if the problem, this is a problem that's you know too big for this community to say, well, I don't think anybody here is for it. But I think the government should step in and say, yes, we're gonna have to look after this in a proper manner because if we don't, you know, our community, our little middle sackle, or middle sackle, here we go, that's why you said it, middle studiac is gonna be a wasteland. Nobody's gonna wanna move in here. And you know, I just bought eight months ago or four months ago. I'm thinking if I knew they were going to put, you know, asbestos behind my house, I don't care if it is 2,000 meters as the crow flies, that's still too close when I got water running down from that hill down onto my property. Well, you know, it does. And then you got that beautiful river down here, and there's fish in that river, and I'm sure, you know, it may not kill us, we may not go swimming in it anymore, but it's going to do a terrible damage to the rivers once it gets in there. Have so they have they have 
Ross asked for an environmental assessment. Is that at the, the place we're at with this project? To uh, they've applied. They've applied. Yeah. They've applied. They've applied. We've all, all been there. That's why we only have these two areas. And apparently, it's all done. It's all done. It's all done. It's been done. It's all done. It's been done. It's all 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 done.
Hello. Who did, where did yeah. that come I from? The government? All, I got it all wrong. But is it from the government? Did John the government say that? Yes. Oh, John Ross no. said that? No, that's just what's it's on the government's on the website. website. John Ross said you just see? add in new that's paper, which not. nobody so, saw. Which doesn't have to be in a certain size. So they just have but to somebody had to put it in the paper. Yeah, so we put it in the paper. So you want to read some books? I found out what was going to be environment. So John Ross. So it's never been out to the public. Uh, one of the things I think is important here, and I, I, you know, a lot of the guys that and gals that uh, the Department of Environment are, are, are pretty keeners. They're they're all about the environment. But the critical part is that once they make the rules, is inspection. You know what I mean? How many times they go to inspect it? Once a year? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a private municipal yeah, solid waste good. facility in West Hans now that uh, uh, GFL bought from the municipality of West Hans. And uh, I would, and they bring in, this is totally different, but they bring in municipal solid waste from out of, out of the province even, you know what I mean? And uh, and I would bet you if you ask the DOE, they call them ICE, the inspection people, how many inspections they did on that facility in the past 12 months, it would likely scare you. So that's one of the real, you know what I mean? I, I think for a lot of parts, the staff at DOE I'm not trying to think, you know, but the staff of the DOE want to do a, a re they care about the environment. But I can tell you that after that, I, uh, I truly believe that the oversight is less. So I you know, the, the, a special waste management disposal under inspection, so I'm going to, it's the owner operator or the person responsible of the waste disposal place that does these inspections. Yes, yeah, so oh, every day, and then they make these coverage. I'll be brief. <laughs> but they're doing water testing now, semi-annually, so twice a year, they're doing water testing. At times it exceeds some of the limits for magnesium, iron, and uh, mercury. So that is leaching from their containments already. Now if they bring in asbestos, are they going to set up dust collectors in the area, on the area, around the area, to collect for asbestos, dust? They're online, you can get them online, so I just want to know if they're going to set up dust collectors in the area where they're working with it. And then maybe every other telephone pole or every hundred telephone pole of this road, put another dust collector down so we can find out if there's anything coming off these trucks that are coming from Toronto and Halifax and wherever. Yeah. You know, so that's one of my questions. Um, water testing for the neighbors that I, I realize over here everybody has a farm and if you don't have a hundred acres you have nothing. But you know, they gotta test the whole community. And who's gonna pay for that testing? It was just on the news the other night. That testing for heavy materials in your water could run up to three hundred dollars in your well. So is the company going to pay for that, or is it, I'm going to have to pay for that every year to test my well so I can sleep safely at night without going in the dark? Maybe, maybe I could add something to that. Yeah. So one of the things that no one seems to know about is if you have a construction site, you're going to get gas spills and things like that. You know, to test water for that costs another three hundred dollars. Yeah, it does. And it runs downhill. Like, and yeah. uh, unfortunately, we're all downhill from that bill. Yeah. In his report, um, Mr. Ross's son has a contingency plan. It's Annex B to it, or F to the companion, or whatever. It's a big, wordy document, and everybody on his site is supposed to be trained. And what happens with a spill? And he does address the issues of uh, a liquid spill for diesel or hydraulic fluid or anything like that there. All his members are supposed to be trained to clean this stuff up. Now, is that certification going to be posted on his door? Can we go up there when they build a building up there and see all the guys that are trained and make sure all the guys that are in there are trained, especially they know what they're doing? Um, my other question I think I brought up earlier, has Pickle been considered? I realize it's already a, a site that they're using. If you look at the, the Picto site, it's on flat land. It's not going to run anywhere, so it's in the ground to stay. Why don't they just use that site? He has plenty of land down there. I know it's not money for him, but we could have that option. The Nova Scotia government has to, Mayor, that the Nova Scotia government should take over this because in 10 or 15 years, Mr. Ross is not going to be around. He's going to take the money and run. The province should be looking after hazardous waste materials, not the municipality, not the Joe neighbor, not whoever, the guy that's making the money, because they're going to take the money and run. And my last question is, uh, they, they say in one of the documents, again, another appendix, that they're going to use water suppression if they have a spill up there of asbestos material. Now, 
the, the water suppression is supposed to be a fine mist. But if you've got some young guy that just jumps off that bobcat, or an old guy like me that jumped off the bobcat, and I grab that hose, and I go to hose this down, and it's 100 PSI, not 5 PSI, it's going to go right off the hill. It's going to wash off. So water suppression, for me, doesn't work when you're on the top of the hill. If you live down where I live, and I live up on the hill, carry whatever you want down the bottom. Yeah. I'll live up on top, and I'll be happy. Yeah. But I'm not on top right now. I'm down on the bottom. So I'm kind of concerned with what's going on up there. And that's the questions I have. And Where's I the water coming from? Who's on the top of the hill? Where's the water? From the groundwater. Water. You'll just pump it out and then it'll run back down on your groundwater. <laughs> Anybody want to buy property down there? Up there. <laughs>